morning, everyone. Welcome. That was almost a smooth transition. Getting a little better at it. Uh, let me know how the audio levels are doing. I'm kind of messing with that at the moment. Um, drop in and say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from. My name is Colby Kleitz, uh, designer from Tampa, Florida, as you can probably see from right there. And yes, today we are going to be designing some Johnny Cash book jackets. And you're probably like, whoa, that's crazy. And yeah, you know, we're going to do it. Because I'm a big Johnny Cash fan, and this is a project I kind of worked on in the past. So I figured this could be a great opportunity to dive into it. Hopefully the audio levels are good. Let me bring it down a little bit on my earphones. Yeah, if you're tuning in right now, drop in the chat, say hello. But yeah, um... Yeah, so first things first, this is kind of an older project that I did. But luckily, well, I was featured on like a Adobe Office Hours yesterday, and Andrew Hockrattle and Nick Longo gave me some great advice on how to improve this. So that's why I figured this would be really fun to dive into right now. You can find the link in the description down below. So yeah, um, so to kind of start us out, let me bring up the older case study I had before. Let me type this in right here, just a moment. And um, here we go. So if we bring up my Behance page right now, you can kind of see I have this one here for Man in Black. And so just dive into some of the stuff they said too. Actually, let's look at it real quick and then we'll go into it. So I have the book cover right here for Man in Black. I have the inside spread, as well as like the flat like dust jacket by itself. Then I also have right here uh, process work is like the overall title and then dives into inspiration board. So I really love to use Pinterest whenever I'm trying to narrow down like the vibe for a brand identity. And this is where I'll go and just pick like everything I can that kind of, you know, remotely kind of feels like it. I mean, have some good Pulp Fiction, some of that uh, fun stuff as well. So yeah, as you can see, I have like 194 pins, which is like way too many for inspiration board. Oh, no worries, Jack. It's good to see you. Uh, yeah, we're not really late. It's kind of starting a little early, maybe like right on time for the most part. No worries. Uh, so yeah, whenever I'm first start designing, I usually start with an inspiration board. And uh, Pinterest is a great resource to go through because there's so much you can find on there that's like uh, not specifically design related. Some stuff that stood out to me is like, you know, when you get a box of crayons and you have like this very like vintage, you know, looking frames. You have these older photos of Johnny Cash. It's all black and white. I really, what really, I really liked about some of these things was like the use of negative space to like right here with that gun and like the silhouette, like, I don't know if that's silhouette really, but like the outline of the face over top of the gun to make something else. So then what I like to do is then I go in and pick like, maybe like 12 photos usually to try to make into like a condensed mood board. So as you can tell in here, it's like, you know, there is Johnny Cash right there, some little stuff. Uh, things in here that really stood out to me, like I said, like the vintage vibes that you get with these crown boxes. You have like a Pulp Fiction where it's just like black and white only. And here is like a fork that's also wine bottles. Johnny Cash was like an A made out of his legs. And right here is John Lennon where you have it split with like text and like the image itself. So I don't know, these are things that really stood out to me as well as this typeface is the one I'm incorporating. So yeah, um, when I was initially working on this, what I like to do is make like a bunch of sketches just to try to narrow down the overall idea I'm going for. So, as you can see here, they're all very different. This one here, like, you can see they're really rough, too, because it's more about just getting the concept out. So, I have, like, a box of crowns here. Maybe it's, like, the smaller ones are black. I have, um, this one right here I liked. It was hard to draw, though. Whereas you think of, like, those old-school detective movies or something where someone's sitting in a car and it's, like, you can't see anything, but all of a sudden, like, they smoke a cigarette and, like, their face, like, lights up. Uh, that's what I was the inspiration on this one. As well as this one where it's like the figures coming out of the shadows. Which actually I should talk about too. The book we're starting out with is Man in Black uh, by Johnny Cash. So it was a song, but he also wrote a book about that to talk about his life and all the uh, stuff he kind of overcame. Because he had like a lot of drug addictions and a lot of personal emotional issues that he had to deal with over life. And he also wrote a book, Man in White, later on, which was all about his... Um, kind of finding religion and kind of like turning away. So it's kind of like the two sides of the coin. So yeah, um, with these right here, this is the one I kind of end up going with, where it's more use of negative space. So I can show you a little more. Uh, also, when I'm brainstorming about how, you know, what to focus on for 
you know, Johnny Cash, I like to do a mind map. Whereas you kind of have like the one word and then you kind of see what stems out from there. So it's like Men in Black. And you have the other words associated with that. And eventually you may end up getting stuff that you didn't actually like think of initially. Because you can kind of combine words like, oh, this texture, there's like guitar or music. It's like burnt, you know, it's like um, dark. Like these different words that you may not like originally have associated with it. As well as like, I like to play with like different mediums. So this was like a scratch board that I played with. It was an older one, so you can see older marks. But I was like, I just wanted to see what it would be like to try it with that method. Which it didn't fully work out, but it's still fun to experiment and just try new things. So yeah, whenever uh, I was, it was getting reviewed on Adobe Office Hours, one of the things that they said too was that this mood board they really liked, as well as the sketches. But they felt that this book jacket wasn't up to like the standard of like, it was kind of let down whenever you see how cool these are, and it just felt like this almost got there, but didn't get there all the way. So if I click on it a little bit, you can kind of see I have like a little bit of texture and grit in there. But I really, what we're going to start out doing today is really just messing with this and making it super gritty and like kind of roughing it up like a lot to really help show the whole Johnny Cash vibe. So that's our goal starting out. Another thing that they recommended was that this could be a really great opportunity to expand on the case study. And instead of just having the man in black book, you kind of make the, or we kind of make the inverse of it, where it's man in white. And it's like the very similar setup, but it's like, yeah, the opposite of it. And then there can also be a box set that includes both of these individual books. And whenever Andrew Hawkrattle brought that up, I was like, oh, that's such a brilliant idea. And it'd be so, like, it'd be pretty easy to implement because, you know, I already have like the mechanics of everything already here. Another thing he said too was that uh, this mock-up doesn't feel very Johnny Cash, which totally makes sense because it's like too clean. It's like art gallery style where Johnny Cash should be on like bricks and like a rusted metal and like, yeah, it should be like super rough. So those are the kind of the things I want to try to work on today is making this book way more rough and then switching over and designing the Man in White book as well. So let me kind of close this out, or at least hide it off to the side. And if you just tuned in to drop and say hello, let me know where you're tuning in from. Uh, so we're diving into Adobe Illustrator, and I was able to find some of, uh, have some of my older files. So we can kind of see like this initial mark that we have here. It's not the strongest, but you can kind of see it was taken from uh, this Johnny Cash image, and it was kind of supposed to work as like a negative space because it's like it's a man in black. So here's a black background; it's kind of popping out. But I do think that this can be improved on. Um, yeah, so you can kind of see originally like where it kind of went with it. It did progress over time, but I still think I didn't hit exactly where I want it to be. So yeah, let me go back over here. We can go to the mood board a little bit, which we kind of saw that already. But So I like to include all these assets in the file so that way I can quickly glance at them and be like, okay. Am I doing what I set out to do? Because that's something I think it's always important to think about. So you can see right here, uh, it's hard to see the canvas behind it. Well, if I do that, you can kind of see it. Um, so yeah, this is like the clean version of it, which doesn't have like that grit and texture and everything in it. So I try to take that away because I want to take like a couple steps back and just go back to the core elements first and kind of refine that a little more. And then we can go in and make it super rough and cool and Johnny Cash-ish. <laughs> so yeah. And let me know too if we have any Johnny Cash fans as well. It's always fun. So from looking at this, I think the first thing I'm going to start out with is redoing this initial like shape right here. That's kind of like the focal point of the cover, which is like uses like the negative space to help portray the inside of his shirt. So I found, um, rather than using this photo like I did before, I found another one that I think would work very well, which is this one. And when I look at this, he has like the exact same hairstyle where it's exactly right there, it's the same clothes. So wherever this was, it has to have been like the same day, <laughs> which is kind of funny. And plus, this one already has like the cigarette inside of it too, so I think that's a great opportunity to include it naturally. Where this one, I had to try to draw it on, and then I don't think it was as successful. So one of the things I like to do is actually I'm going to go and 
Can I put it on a new? That's not what I wanted. Move it back a little bit. Oh, that's why I minimized that. So let me place it again. Boom. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lock this layer. Just to make it easier for me to work like on top of it. Oh, and Jack's a Johnny Cash fan. Nice. I really wish I could be playing Johnny Cash music right now. I think that is what would really help, you know, us get like the mindset of it. But, you know, I probably would get the video taken down if I did that. So, can't really do that. I did try to start out with some music by my friend's band, The Spoon Dogs, which is the closest, you know, I could find to like that rough, you know, Johnny Cash-ish vibe. Johnny Cash-ish, I keep saying that, but I don't think that word really works that well. But I'm just gonna start in here, just like going over some of these shapes with a pen tool. And, yeah, just slowly, you know, working on it. I need to zoom out a little more. Lately I've been working in Adobe XD a lot too, so I gotta get in the zone before I kinda get in the hang of it. So let's go ahead and bring some of these pieces in. Jackson, so we'll just put uh, Johnny Cash on at home. I am jealous. I was really jamming out to Johnny Cash before this. Cause I'm like, okay, I gotta get in the right mindset, you know. A lot of stuff is, you know, kind of sad, but you know, it's all really great stuff. And what was a big inspiration for actually choosing this project initially was, uh, I found um actual like man in white book at like my grandparents' house, and so it was really cool to be able to actually read it. And then I didn't realize there was actually the man in white book, but I don't know, it's cool to actually like have that book, which I don't have with me today, which, you know, you know, isn't the best thing. Cause that would have been like the best time to have it. But right now I'm just going to get like the real rough shape and then I can kind of go in a little later and refine it completely. But yeah. So I'm just kind of starting out with these colors. And to be honest, there's no really specific reason why. I just think these, well, I guess there is, that's what I'm about to say. <laughs> um, these are just like smaller shapes, you know, that are compared to like the rest of the outfit. So I feel like these might be, I don't know, that's just kind of why I started here. And then also what I should do is go in here, adjust the opacity to help me kind of like see through it a little bit. Because even right here, it's hard to tell if his chin like extends. So I'm just going to do that for right now. Yeah, and Jack who's uh, commenting right now, uh, she also has a live stream too. I believe you're going live today as well. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think we were talking about that in Discord a little bit ago. But yeah, you should definitely check out her work. Yeah, let me kind of adjust some of these. Let me bring this up a little bit. So eventually I will actually go back and bring all these up to probably 100% opacity, but right now when I'm just working on these, it makes it easier to kind of like see the image below it. It'll be interesting trying to see how this shape looks. Because I think that was a problem right into the last one with, is it's like not, you know, a very recognizable shape of like the inside of the suit, because it's not common. Oh, and Jack said, yep, you and I flip-flop today. I'm doing XD and you're working in Illustrator. Yeah, that is crazy. 
Like I said, it's good though, you know, at least there's content of like, you know, both out there. I was very, I was planning on working in XD again today. But you know, I figured after watching Adobe Office Hours and like they give me feedback on this, I was like, you know, I'd feel inspired again to dive back into this one. And if it, anyone else tuned in too, let me know if you have any questions at all. You know, I may not be able to answer them. You know, Jack's pretty great about them too. But yeah, I'm just working on this. If not, we can just talk about you know, the reasoning behind it. how this looks so far. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring a copy over here. I have to mess with the colors too to really have like some shading on it. But when I just look at the silhouette too, not very strong because this side of the collar kind of gets hidden as well. So that's part that definitely stands out to me. This little corner, that's an easy fix. Or it should be. <laughs> Let me bring both those points. And it, it is always interesting too, because like whenever you see people usually design, it's usually set up as like a cookie cutter show where it's like everything is kind of laid out, you know, super clearly ahead of time, where you kind of know the beginning and the end result, so you don't end up in like in a weird position where you know you aren't able to finish the project. But I'm kind of just diving into it today. I have a rough idea of where I want to go with this, but. You know, really when you're designing, like, you don't always know where it's going to go. So I figured I'll just do what I actually do and just kind of play with it and see where it takes me. Because who knows, I may even finish this middle shape and realize that I don't like it as much as this other one. Which, let me go ahead and copy this over. So just looking at them like... Quickly, like the scale isn't a problem. Hmm. See, I just like how the color really goes out in this one. I can, I can probably just fake it, you know, because I don't have to say, you know, 100%, you know, accurate to this photo reference, but it would be kind of nice. It's interesting because when I'm tracing an image kind of like this, it's very different than how I would, you know, work on like a logo or something in Illustrator. Because usually I work in like steps. When I was uh, following along like some Aaron Draplin's videos, he does a really great job of like showing the process. He really talks about like vectors are free and how like you really don't need to just have one version that you just keep refining and, you know, having just keep working on the same one, you should really just keep like copy and pasting it and showing all the different iterations over time. Because I think that is really cool also to even have a portfolio and show like how you got from, you know, to the point you landed on. That you didn't just get there the first time, that you really thought through like all of these other, you know, aspects of it. So one of the things when I'm trying to like adjust this collar too is I want to make sure it's like kind of far enough away to be noticeable. Because if it's like too close, then it starts to get like a little awkward. It starts to be almost like, um, what did uh, my professor in chat call it? Oh 
I'm trying to blink for the words right now. But oh well. Go, let me just kind of look at this one for a minute. Again. Let me just bring up this opacity. So it's still some weirder spots. Which actually, I should adjust, adjust that on the actual photo. So I keep just, like fixing it on this side. That's probably not the best thing to do. And if you're digging this music as well, this is by my buddy Seth Lynn. You should give him a follow. I have the link down below. He's very awesome and put together some music very quickly. And it is... I'm very grateful. Because I do think the music kind of helps with this vibe. Because if not too, it would just be, you know, dead silence and me designing. Which would not be as much fun. You know, I might have to like sing some Johnny Cash songs, but then... I'd probably lose all the viewers that way. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go and delete that one again. Let's paste this version. Let's look at this silhouette. Still not very great. So if you're just tuning in right to right now, uh, we're designing like a Johnny Cash book jacket. And it's more of like reworking an older project I had. So you can kind of see here's the mood board with the vibe. I have some like the, the typefaces and like styles and stuff set up over here just so you can easily copy and paste it. I mean, I do have it over in like my library's like panel over here, but I kind of like to see everything on this can, like this file that I'm working on. So you can see this is what I originally had with that, uh, I guess a negative space, kind of what's well, not really negative space because the head and stuff is kind of negative space with like the inside of the collar. So that's what we're kind of working on and seeing if maybe this version or this photo reference may be stronger to work with than this one. But honestly, as I do it, the more I'm leaning towards is like the version I had may be the stronger one because I'm running into problems with this collar because it kind of gets hidden and I really like it how it overlaps. So yeah. Looking back at this too though, what's very nice about this typeface too is it comes with like this grit kind of in it. And I really love that, and I want to include that over everything I have so far. Because if I can, yeah, you can just see all that. I think it's really nice, and it really helps communicate the whole roughness of the Johnny Cash vibe. Especially with Man in Black, since it's talking about, like, all the things he's had to overcome in life. So, out of habit, I just always save it a million times. So you might just see me do that, and be like, oh, that's crazy, but, you know, I think it's worth it. So... To take a break from this for a second, I'm gonna dive into here. So one of the resources I really like to use is True Grit Texture Supply. And it's this awesome website, so I'm gonna bring it up right here and just kinda give them a shout out for a second. Because I'm gonna be using some of their brushes in a little bit, and like textures. So TrueGritTextureSupply.com, you can find their website. And it has all these awesome resources for designers, illustrators, and artists. Um, that really helps give it this like rustic, you know, gritty, like... Yeah, this is sometimes half tones. Like they have all sorts of stuff. They even have some free stuff as well right here. So it's um, a very limited pack, but it's awesome. Like before you invest in something, then you can actually like try out some of their other resources. But even the ones for Illustrator, the ones I have are for Photoshop. But just to kind of like show some of these things, just because I really love them and I want to incorporate this gritty style into more of my projects. Especially like another project I have in my portfolio is for Gasparilla Music Festival. And I definitely want to go back and make that super gritty and grainy and uh, tons of fun. So the Johnny Cash vibe that I think kind of fits, like this is definitely one right here, Mixed Grit. You can check that out. Actually, let me just double check the stream over here. It's looking good. Uh, so yeah, you can see it's like 40 original textures kind of come with this one pack and it's like all these that are very nice like I don't know, so there's tons of ways to incorporate them and I love the examples they show. Oh, there's a little error right there. So yeah, with half tones, you can have the larger dots or the smaller dots. Yeah, and even, uh, let me show you the brushes as well. Because right now I'm really wishing I had these illustrator brushes, which is why I'm going to take it into Photoshop afterwards. Yeah, let's look at, um, let's do these ones. 
the Grain Shader Brush Set, which these illustrations are awesome. So yeah, it comes with a lot of different brushes to work with. Um, so he's mostly just telling us like how many brushes and like giving us examples of like them in use. Yeah, so you can kind of see how they look. And so you can imagine like the shading, like once you have like that, that inside shape for Johnny Cash, like we were talking about, then we can actually go in with this brush and, you know, add all that nice grit that really makes it a lot of fun. Uh, one artist who I really love that uses similar, but it's different still is like Hank Washington. He calls it like fuzzies. So you can find his stuff on Behance as well, where like he'll be like illustrating fuzzies, where it's using like, yeah, like a similar kind of brush to help portray that. But I'm gonna go ahead and drag that out of the way, kind of get back to work over here. So yeah, the reason I was bringing that up is there is um, some textures that I have that I think could be pretty interesting to apply. Uh, let me find them. Here we go. So film dust textures. And this is just a whole pack I had, and I'm pretty sure it was from True Grit Texture Supply that I just showed. So I'm just going to drop this image in here. So you can see, rather than just having that black background, you know, we can have something like cool like that. So this is one that really stood out to me. So let me go over to my layers. I'm just going to copy that, delete it from that layer, select that one. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's on that background layer. So that way it's like behind this text. And then I'm just going to scale it up. But you want to make sure it's like stays like proportional because it is still like a photo. And if you don't, then it'll start to get like, you'll start to see like some weirder things happening. And um, it may be harder to see, but there is a little frame around here, which maybe this will help. I was going to drag in these little guidelines from that ruler over there. And you may, I may be getting close to the webcam, but I just want to make sure those are, you know, pretty accurate. But what I can actually do for a second to make sure it's accurate. Go to opacity, bring this down a little bit, so I can make sure I can find that space. And yeah, and then let me do that as well right here. And then I could also put lines right in here, like where it folds over, but I don't think it's really necessary. Let me bring that back up a little bit and just kind of see how that looks for a second. And even just adding like a simple like texture like that, I think adds so much to it. And I may want to go and change the opacity some to where it's not as intense and it doesn't start to like, you know, mess with the text. And click off to the side for a second. Cause a big thing too is when you're doing like books is you wanna make sure, well, most designs too, like graphic design, you wanna make sure like at the end of the day, it does what it was built to do. So if like you can't read the text that's on there, then it, and it's like the coolest design in the world, then I think it would still be unsuccessful. And then I'm just gonna go and crop it just to make our lives a little easier. But I'm gonna do it a little bit over the border. Because sometimes when you're actually like printing, you want to, you know, have it go like over the edge for like the bleed. And I'll supply that for now. And just for the simple like texture like that over top of it, from like, I think it can add so much to it. Cause, actually let me make sure I can select that for a second. Going from this to that, yeah, it's a world difference. And it really does start to get that, you know, vibe that Johnny Cash goes for, which is like all that, you know, grit and grain and that real rough, you know, style. And especially with Man in Black, it's like that was stuff he was really struggling with during this time. But yeah, so saving it again, just uh, OCD or force of habit or something. So yeah, these are the shapes we were working with a minute ago. This is one we currently have, and I was experimenting with this one to see if you know it could work. But the more I do it, the more I don't think I like it. So honestly, for now, it may just be best to keep this current shape how I have it. And then I can go into Photoshop and start to add um, grit and like some texture and yeah, some of those brushes over top of this. So 
Yeah, I just saved it a minute ago, but I'm gonna go to saving it as a... Um... Oh, I need to export it. That's what I'm looking for. So you go to File, Export, Export As, and um, so as you can tell, I'm an Illustrator right now, but I'm exporting it as a PSD, so a Photoshop file. And then I want to select Use Artboard, and um, which I think it's the only artboard inside this file. Um, yeah, so all that looks pretty good. This may take a second, because it's still like a bigger file I'm kind of working with. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So now I'm going to open up Photoshop. And this is where sometimes when you start to have too many programs running at once, you can run into like issues of like pushing the software. So let's really hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> but yeah, I have faith in you know, this machine to pull through. So go to that file. Um, this was the Photoshop file I just saved a minute ago. So once this program finishes opening up, perfect timing, kind of, almost, then I'll open up this file. But since I'm running like multiple programs and like streaming from OBS and like doing multiple things, I just want to make sure, you know, I don't give it too many commands at one time and, you know, everything messes up. So yeah, here we go. So we're in Photoshop now. And you can tell we have that texture we just added a minute ago. You can really zoom in. Which actually right here you can see the top is like 100%. So when I look at it, I think that actually starts to get pixelated. I worry about this texture now. But I just want to double check these images that I have in here. And make sure they're good. Which that's okay. This one was one I went like a while back and really roughed up. Which, yeah, I should have had the cleaner version here to do that. But, well, um, so then, uh, I just showed True Grit Texture Supply a minute ago, and so they have some really cool brushes that, you know, I've installed from a while back. So I can go up here and see, kind of like, oh, maybe I'm actually using, uh, Kyle's Spotter Brushes. Yeah, I may not have those True Grit ones at the moment. And those Kyle Spotter ones will still work very well. But yeah, I just want to glance in here real quick, see if I still have it. Yeah, some of those are from like, uh, past like Adobe Live event, I think. Here we go, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and use Kyle's Splatter Brush, because I think that's really fun. Let me go and kind of add a new layer on top of this, too. So that way, I can always go back and delete that layer, or start stacking stuff different ways. And also, there's probably in here who are like Photoshop gurus that are watching this and they're like, what is he doing? But, you know what? This is kind of how I work, so I'm going to do it. Which I think that one... See, I don't really like how that one looks. Let me experiment with these brushes for a minute. Kind of see which one I like the best. I don't see anything on that one. Oh, here we go. I think my machine was thinking for a second. Here we go. Oh no, that's not the one I was wanting to mess with. It was this one. Which nothing seems to show up with that one. I have a color selected. Yeah, that's weird. Um, I kind of like this one, I think. Uh, actually, it was the other one that I'm kind of a fan of. This one. Cause I feel like that fits in a little better with... Actually, let me go back to the this text. Because I think it starts to fit in a little more with that. So maybe if I bring this down... Yeah, I think that starts to work a little bit. And then, I don't want to do like a super white-white, so I want to do like a more of a... Like a off-white kind of grayish. And then... Yeah, I think it's literally just going in here and adding these, and I really just want to rough this up like a bunch. And so I may think of some other ways of doing this, adding more texture on top of it. Um, I brought up Andrew Hawkrat a little bit ago. Oh, Jackson, you do you. I appreciate it. 
Oh, that's sweet. Um, yeah, I brought Andrew Hawk out a little bit ago. Because he has some cool projects where, like, he'll design something, and then he'll go with, like, an old-school scanner, and then rescan it in and, like, move it around, and it does some really crazy effects. Um, but yeah, I think it's really great just to always try to experiment, and especially if you can incorporate, like, physical ways into your design, like, then I think it helps a lot. Like, physical, I mean, like, yeah, how incorporate, like, a scanner, or, like, sometimes people will take photos of stuff and, like, yeah, and just kind of see what effects happen. Because I think it's way more cool than adding, like, some digital textures that everyone may have. And what I'll do is, too, I'll go back over with, like, a darker color as well. Just so it doesn't start to feel like a Star Wars book. <laughs> if anyone has any ideas or feedback, too, let me know. But if not, I'm just gonna keep kind of working and, you know, adding some of this to this book jacket. And once I get maybe, like, this little bit done, I like to zoom out a little bit and see if, like, it looks weird or if I'm kind of on the right track at all. Which I think it's starting to film a little bit. Cause especially once I kind of have that with, like, some layers and, like, it starts to go all over there, I think it'll be pretty cool. Pretty cool. So yeah, actually, before I go and add the texture on this, I'm just gonna keep working on like the outside of it, and so so that way, like I do this whole layer once, and I'll just kind of work up like a layer at a time, and like each layer will probably be like a different color, just so it makes it a lot easier to take it away if I need to, like I don't have to like restart everything. And I actually got a text a little bit ago from my buddy Alex, and I wonder if he's still in the chat or if he, you know, tuned out already. He's a very talented film photographer, and so if he does comment, you know, you can kind of jump to his Behance page and see some of his photography. But his name is Alex Alonzo, which is a pretty common name, you know, so it'd be hard to just, like, search for Alejandro. So, you know, if you're there watching still, you should definitely say hi. And maybe some people can go check out your awesome film photography. And if I get to see you soon, too, I want to, you know, maybe get some new photos done. Because I haven't taken any photos in, it's been like a year now. Which is crazy. Let me double check my stream again. It looks like we're still good over here. So yeah, let me just keep kind of just adding all this kind of grit to it. Let's get, actually, I'm going to zoom out again, kind of take a step back and look at it. Yeah, so I need to add more. It's getting... Uh, this is like, there's more texture here than here. So I gotta make sure I just kind of have like an even coat for the most part. At least it like, appears kind of even. Oh, Julius saying, hey Colby, I like it, just popped in and discovered your live stream. I'd like to know if you have done the same texture-wise with the type. Oh, so, no, thankfully the actual type has this, like, texture kind of in with it. Yeah, no, thank you for the question, Julius. Um, yeah, let me show my Illustrator file really fast. But actually, I'm going to click Save. i of just force a habit, you know, always to play a save. Um, click on Illustrator right here, and then I can kind of... So in my mood board too, I kind of found this typeface that I really like. Um, it starts to get pixelated right here because it kind of hits the limit, but 
This image is Bohem. Bohem. Uh, vintage label front. It's a free version. Yeah, it's just all caps like that. So it's you only have the caps and you have like the numbers. But I don't know, I think it's really cool. They use like whiskey, old barrel, and I don't know. When I first came across this, I was like, oh, this is super cool. And um, it is kind of hard to tell from this image, but you kind of see there's spots right there. So yeah, this um, text already came with that texture on it, which that was like I was a huge fan of that, and I was like, oh, that could be really cool to implement across the entire book more. But oh yeah, thank you for the question, Julia. Glad you joined in us. Um, so yeah, which you're right, the text on this is so nice. I need to have the one in the background be more focused, kind of like that. But I'm just kind of doing it you know, a little bit of splatter at a time. Do a little by little. You can kind of tell I'm not really doing it as much on the text. I don't want to take away from that. So I was saying a little bit ago too, like you want to make sure the functionality of this is like, well, you got to remember the functionality of this, which is like, it's a book, so it needs to be legible above all else. Like I can try to make it all Johnny Cash and like really rough it up and, you know, just beat it up, you know, let my dog chew on it, you know, toss it in the fire and make it like super rough and cool. But like, if it doesn't do what it's meant to do, then still, you know, not successful. So, yeah, it's always just something to remember with all the signs. But this is just little by little. And like, I'm sure I probably could scale this up and do it like all at once, but I really want to kind of take my time and kind of go in there and just make sure it's where I want it to be. Oh, and Julia's saying, oh, you're, oh yeah, the, Oh yeah, oh yeah, the type is great. Thank you for showing. Yeah, no problem. No, thank you for asking the question too, uh, Julia. Nice to meet you as well. And if I'm like repeating the questions out loud, it's just because afterwards the questions in the chat doesn't really show up in the video. So I like to do that just to kind of help give context if anyone's watching it in the future. If you guys are tuned in too, let me know if you have a favorite Johnny Cash song. I'm curious. Because I've had some, and then it just like, it keeps changing. And like, I was literally driving yesterday, I had to drive from like Orlando to Tampa to come here, where I am right now, and um, most of the time I was listening to Johnny Cash songs, so I was trying to get like, I don't know, I was starting to get in the zone. It was cool, I was watching an episode, oh, you know saying, hello friends, first time visiting. That's awesome, glad to have you here. It's super cool. Let me know if you have any questions or anything too. Right now we're working on a Johnny Cash book cover, jacket, book sleeve. There's probably like a ton of ways to call it. So just kind of zoom out real quick, let you see it. Now zoom back in. Let me adjust the stuff over here for a second. Let me zoom this down and double check the stream. I have to keep kind of refreshing my iPad over here because that's the best device I can use to preview it. Um, but yeah. We'll keep going in here. But yeah, if you have a favorite Johnny Cash song, I was watching an episode of Drunk History like this past week, and there's one guy who's talking about, there's an artist who, you know, he would write music, and he wrote a song, it was called Sunday Morning Coming Down, and it was one that Johnny Cash covers, and he was talking about, and it was the whole story of like that guy and how he presented the song to Johnny Cash, and then in the song too, it talks about like, on Sunday morning, getting stoned, and during that time, that was, like, huge to have that in music. Like, where people would actually say, like, stoned or talk about, like, yeah, that type of stuff in music. And, um, so then the producers for, like, the TV that he would work for, like, the recording label was like, no, you can't do that. You need to change that lyric to Sunday morning coming home and kind of, yeah, and just kind of change the whole vibe. So that really just... And if you really think about it, like with the rest of the lyrics, it really changes the whole meaning of the song. And so, yeah, and then in the episode it talks about how they're in the recording studio and he thought he was going to say 
Sunday morning coming home, and then Johnny Cash kind of does right by him and says the lyrics that the guy originally wrote. And I don't know, I thought it was really cool. And so yesterday I was like re-listening to that song, and I was like, I had like a new like found appreciation for it. One well, Kyle's saying, or Kylie is saying, Ghost Riders in the Sky is definitely top five. That is a really good one. Yeah, I just have so many favorite Johnny Cash songs. Like, we could really, like, during the stream, we'd just be playing all Johnny Cash songs, and we wouldn't even have to repeat a song. Because of how many, like, he has recorded. It's, like, insane. So I'm just kind of checking these areas. I want to make sure it's, like, kind of consistent. Like, when it comes to the... Uh, this is like splatter I'm kind of putting on here. So when I zoom out, you really it's hard to tell. So I think you have to get like halfway in here to kind of really see the texture. But then once it's like printed and wrapped around a book, you can really see it. Oh, Leon's saying real country. Nice. I was also like he has a lot of songs too where it's like they're covers and stuff. But one of them I was really liking was like Hello Walls. Or she has a might be really else I'm thinking of. <laughs> um. Yeah, he covers like The Gambler, um, I don't know, then there's the classics, like even Man in Black is a great one, which is kind of the book, you know, cover right here. Yeah, because when I first originally started working on this, I didn't know he had a Man in Black book. I knew he had a Man in White book, but yeah, just from doing research and like creating a mood board, you know, for this project initially, then I was like, oh wow, that's really cool. And that's why I think towards the end of this, it's going to be really cool to be able to make, like, a box set out of this and be able to have both books and kind of work and mix, like, a series out of it. Yeah, that's some other top of this. So I really want this to kind of look like, you know, maybe whenever they're printing it, you know, it'll get, like, roughed up and there's some, like, errors with it and it's like the printer got, like, stuck or something. Who knows? We're just gonna have some fun with it and see how much we can rough it up. And just so y'all know too, this is more of a passion project. It's not like um, the real book. Well, it's a real book, but it's not like the actual cover for that book, you know? If the Johnny Cash estate wanted to hire me, that would be like a dream come true, and I really doubt that would happen, but, you know, just to throw it out to you, it's a, so I was talking to someone in Discord uh, a little bit ago, and they were talking about, like, if it was okay to do projects just, you know, even if you, you weren't, like, hired to do them. And I was telling them, yeah, I totally think it is. Like, people were talking about, like, oh, yeah, it's just personal projects. But I also heard them called like passion projects because it's just something that you're passionate about. And um, I think it was at Creative South this past year when I attended. It was a conference in Georgia. There's one of the speakers, and I believe it was Rob Zilla, who some of y'all might be familiar with. He would talk about um, it was either Rob Zilla or Hank Washington, but I'm pretty sure it was Rob Zilla. He was talking about like um, hire yourself for these projects, like create the projects you want to get hired to do. If that makes sense, you know, like it's gonna be hard to get your first job designing a logo until you have you know logos in your portfolio. So if that's the case, you know, make up some companies or find some companies to rebrand it yourself just for fun, but make sure that you have a reason behind doing it. So same thing with this, you know, I wasn't really, not really expecting to get hired to make book jackets, but I like Johnny Cash and this seemed like a fun project. So I'm gonna go for like another color as well. So I think actually what's good is I can pull the colors from this black and white image of Johnny Cash rather than just kind of making them up. So that way they all kind of feel like they came from somewhere. So yeah, let me zoom in here. That one I'm adding, see it starts to get lost more in the background, but I think that's actually really good. So I can kind of go and fill in some of these gaps a little bit. Which I may not actually like the ones over top of this photo. So since this is on a separate layer, which is very nice, I'm just gonna actually go in here a little bit with this eraser and just kind of clean this up. Because a little while back I actually went and added like these effects over top of this image. So I think it already is, you know, you know, gridded up enough. And Leon's saying, aren't like 99% of projects on Behance passion projects? You know, 
Honestly, probably. Like, a lot of the great designers I've seen, too, like, they had, will, like, show their own work on, like, their websites or, like, for their agency and stuff like that. And so I would not be surprised at all if, you know, like, 99% or, like, it's probably an exaggeration, but, like, you know, most of them are probably passion projects. And so, yeah, when someone brought that up, I was like, I just want to make sure it's, like, clear, like, yeah, you can totally make something because you want to make it, you know? It doesn't have to be, like, you know, you're hired to do this thing. Which I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, too, because it might be kind of hard to... I can see it clearly on my screen, but I wonder if, you know, it's fully communicating through the stream. Because the big thing I'm a little worried about with this is it might end up looking like a Star Wars book, or like... Rotten space, and so that's what I definitely want to get away from. But I think by adding that initial texture down here with like the hairs and all that like film texture, I think that will definitely help with that. Which I may end up adding something else over top of it. Uh, Leon says I probably wouldn't stream real work due to respect for the client unless they requested it to be live streamed. You know, that's honestly, yeah, that's a great point. If you're gonna act, if you're gonna live stream or if you're gonna record your process of like client work, you definitely have to get permission from them, because you don't know if like what they're working on is like confidential or it's their competitors reviewing it. That's a great point, Leon. Thank you. Which I think I'm getting to a good point where we can kind of zoom out and. Take a step back and see where we're at with this. Oh yeah, I gotta work on that as well. Yeah, so when you zoom out, you really start to not be able to see it. One thing that's nice up here is you can kind of see where it files at 100%. So you can kind of see where, yeah, like where it's gonna be like the crisp at or whatever. Um, sorry, I'm trying to like talk and think at the same time. <laughs> So yeah, I think the next thing I'm going to do is go mess with this front shape right here. I'm going to try to add some, like, you know, grain and stuff to this. Which, yeah, let me think for a second. So where I have these shadows, I should try to use the grain in the same way, where it's like, it works as a shadow. At least that's what I'm thinking. So I can kind of incorporate some of these same colors in here, actually. I want to go back, so I'm doing control Z if you can't really see what I'm doing. And then there's some spots on top of this. So the stuff I'm putting on top of here, I want to kind of make sure it doesn't overlap, because I want to make it feel like it's on this object. Which this would have been a great opportunity for like a clipping mask or something, but since it's all like the background's got one layer, I didn't really give myself that opportunity. Which is so hard to see. I need to do a darker color. So I'm gonna go back over to this image I was working with and find, um, I think one of these down here would be nice. So go back over here to this little illustration. Click B to go back to brush. Yeah, let's try right in here. Bring it down a little bit. I can just kind of add in a little bit of texture. It's not really, I think it gotta be scaled up a little more, just to kind of get, yeah, there we go. Um, and then kind of do that a little bit. So since um, this right here is my racer, it's probably down to like 30% flow. It makes it to where it like kind of hides those. It doesn't like fully erase them, which is kind of nice. So I think then the texture on top of this layer will really like pop. So I kind of realized that on accident, but I think I'm gonna just go around this one time and bring all of the that grit down a little bit. And 
And if you're just tuned in too, welcome. We're designing a book cat. Uh, uh, give me the speak still. Um, a book jacket, you know, for Johnny Cash. And it's the man in black is what we're going for. And after this, you know, we can dive into man in white and then make like a box set for both of the books. But to go command zero and kind of zoom out, this is what we're looking at right now. And I'm just adding some nice like grit and grain texture on there. And as a resource too, uh, just to bring it up again, just because I really love this site, uh, True Grit Texture Supply. They have some really awesome textures and brushes. I would definitely recommend to everyone if you're trying to get something that looks more like rustic or even like half tones and I don't know anything. They have brushes for Procreate, Photoshop, Illustrator, everything. They even have a category for free stuff. So if you want to like try it out first before you even like go in and like purchase brushes. Um, yeah, you can subscribe with your email and they'll send you over some free stuff. But you can see all these different brushes they have, they're super nice. And like, they're actually like really good. You can also find their stuff on Creative Market as well, but this is like their personal site. So yeah, I'm just gonna get that out of the way. And then before I dive back in, let me double check the stream over here. And it looks like we're still good. Awesome. So one of the links I put down below is for Adobe Office Hours. If you're looking to get your work like reviewed or critiqued and get feedback from some really cool designers, that is definitely what you want to do. It's um another it's a new series they're doing from Adobe Live. I think they partnered with like Adobe Awards and Adobe Students and you know, I use the word Adobe a lot. <laughs> but it's partnering with like a lot of these different teams, you know, that kind of work all around Adobe Live to just really help give feedback and like it's a portfolio review session. So I definitely recommend you guys, you know, look into that. The way you get your work reviewed is whenever you post on social media. You use the hashtag Adobe Office Hours. And I think it really doesn't matter which platform you use, because I know Andrew Hawkreddle and Nick Longo are very active on like a lot of stuff. But yeah, that's kind of how you get involved there. You can also go to Instagram.com dash like Adobe Awards or just like at Adobe Awards. They share a lot of the content too by Office by Adobe Office Hours. I don't know, these are just like awesome resources from the community where they post work and yeah, are constantly giving feedback and doing what they can. But I'm getting a little distracted. I'm supposed to be working on this. <laughs> so yeah, actually I'm just gonna do it a bunch over top of this and then I'll go around like the outside of it and just kind of clean up afterwards. Which I'm sorry too if you just hear my mouse clicking a million times. I'm curious here. I bet that's actually getting picked up in the microphone, so that's kind of funny. I'm sorry about that. And then I'll just kind of like slightly go over these a little bit just to make it not as harsh. Because I kind of want the part that's the shadow to be darker. Cool. And if you did go and recently follow Adobe Live or Adobe Awards on Instagram, I did just see they just went live right now. So they sometimes they actually bring in people and have like guest speakers and like on Instagram Live. So it's really cool to utilize these different platforms, you know, to help engage the creative community. But they're super cool. I'm gonna zoom out again. So we're getting there. It's definitely not where I want it to be at all. But you know that's what kind of that's what happens when you're just kind of working on the fly. You just kind of see what works and what doesn't. Yeah, I don't like that. Let me go Command Z, kind of get rid of you know the black dots I just added. Let me click here. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna click Save again really fast, just because it's a force of habit and it's an excuse to drink some more coffee. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over to this image, pull another color. And instead of just picking like this black background, I wanna go into something in here that's like, you know, darker, but it's not like super, like the blackest black, you know? Cause too, when I'm working, I don't like to actually use like, you know, go over here and use like this farthest corner, like that darkest black, you know? I like to use some of these other colors, cause it's very nice 
to, I don't know, it's like, I think it's easier on the eyes. Because it is nice sometimes with like contrast, but then sometimes it can just be like too intense that, you know, it takes away from it. And then I just add all these little speckles kind of on top of it. And let me know too if you're just tuned in to a little bit ago we were talking about our favorite Johnny Cash songs. So you know if you're a fan and you got a cool one, let us know. Cause I would be surprised. I know he has so he has so much music too, but I feel like I know a lot of this. So I'd be surprised if you can tell me some like a song I don't know that afterwards I can, you know, go and jam out to. And so, which is a side note too, I'm gonna be streaming again tomorrow at the same time. So it's like noon to two, which is like EDT, so that's, I'm in Florida, so that's like our time zone. But, you know, if you're tuning in right now, it's just the same time tomorrow. And so that's when we'll be finishing up this project. We'll definitely be working on like the uh, Man in White book and like working on a box set and kind of combine this into a bigger piece. And just add in all these little speckles. Which, when I look at this too, these are just such harsh lines at that point. I think it'd be nice if I can go in and like, I don't even know if this would work. See, I don't, that's not the brush I'm going to use for that. If I can find something here that can kind of go and like help blend this, you know, a little more into the background, I think that'd be nice. This brush didn't seem to be working for me earlier, so I'm curious. Oh, I see. It's actually doing something different than I expected. It's like scratching it. And that's what I want right here. Get these brushes, which these are Kyle's. Also, yeah, I'm just kind of experimenting with these for a minute. <laughs> That'd be fun. Huh? Ooh. Yeah, I'll use this one. I'm close that and scale it down using the brackets. I'm just kind of going up over this ledge. I'm going to just bring in a little bit of that background color. It's like a couple speckles. Oh, Leon's saying, Cash is dope. Have you listened to any of uh, Hank Third's stuff? No, I haven't. Are you to... Is it like Hank the Third, Hank I, I, I or something? I feel like I should... Is it like Hank Williams or... Yeah, like, uh... Who are you talking about exactly, Leon? I'm curious. I do love a lot of that older stuff. I have like a whole playlist. If you go on my Spotify, which I don't know if you'd be able to even find my Spotify. Um, I like it. I call it old man music. You know, where I got, like, Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, like, some of these, like, classic, you know, people. And I think it would be nice to just, yeah, have, like, it definitely, like, heavier on one side. Even just from looking at this right now, I like that. Oh, Hank Sr.'s grandson. We don't talk about Hank Jr. Interesting. That's crazy. Yeah, it's his grandson. Yeah, no, I haven't listened to him. I'm going to... I should have gotten a pen and paper. I'm going to remember that, and I'm going to look him up after this. And then during tomorrow's stream, I'm going to be like, yeah, that was good. Or it's like, why'd you send me that? That was terrible. But most likely it's going to be good. So I'm definitely going to check that out after this. Which is a side note, a little fun fact. So... I just graduated from college this semester, and my graduation is today. Granted, it's a virtual graduation because everything that's happening, so they're just kind of playing like a video of everyone's names, which is kind of funny. So after this, I'm going to be, yeah, virtually graduating. <laughs> so that's fun. Ooh, yeah, I think that adds a lot. 
I like where we're going with this. And I think really using this for like the shadows is gonna help a lot. And then, so you can kinda see it's overlapping that top part, but I'm gonna go in with that brush and kinda take it away after this. Oh, Jackson, congrats. Oh, put on your hat. And Jackson, you should've uh, live streamed in the cap and gown. See, that would have been ridiculous. People would have been like, what is, what is this guy doing? But um, I currently don't have a cap and gown too because like those refunds, like they had to, they issued refunds and stuff. Like hopefully they'll be able to actually, they're talking about potentially rescheduling a graduation, but who knows? I was thinking about, I need to actually go on like Amazon to get a cap and gown because it's way cheaper than going through like the actual people who do it. Which my sister has her cap and gown right there. It's like literally right up there. Um, but I'm not about to wear that. Because all she has is the gown and then her cap was like decorated. So it's gonna have like stuff from like a sorority or like very girly stuff. So that'd be... Yeah, it wouldn't really work too well. And Jack's saying, I live streamed in a Viking hat once. Make your own cap. I should. The uh, Viking cap is really cool. I think that'd be fun. I really... Yeah. I thought about like if I had to do like a Tiger King app or something, you know, like just go all out and get real wild with costumes and stuff. Cause I'd probably keep some viewers to, you know, see Joe Exotic designing an app. They're probably like, what's wrong with this guy? But I think I will design a cap. I was thinking about going on Amazon, getting like a cheap one. Cause those are like $15 compared to the other ones that are probably like $50 or something crazy. Oh, but like digitally design a cap. Too. I wonder, huh? So some of y'all might be familiar. Like, I don't know. There's a machine called like a Cricut, like a. I heard someone called Cry Cut once, but I'm pretty sure it's Cricut. Um, I'm looking up the link here in just a second, and they're really useful machines. Oop. <laughs> I just tried to copy and paste it onto my iPad. So I'm just gonna type in Cricut.com. Hopefully that works. That might not actually work, but you can kind of see that I just dropped in the chat. So the crickets, they're like these little machines that cut stuff out for you. You know, so if you have a vector file, like an Illustrator that you make, you can kind of make it the outline and it'll cut out the shapes. So I know a lot of people use that for like caps and gowns and stuff to, yeah, to be able to like make shapes and then kind of like use an iron on vinyl and like, you know, adhere it to the cap or like other stuff. So that could be actually a pretty fun stream to, um, sorry, I just saw Leon's thing. Where the girly one? <laughs> I did look for it, to be honest, but yeah, because right now I'm like over at my sister's place because my current place, the Wi-Fi, is not reliable. So that's fun to work with when live streaming, but yeah, um, I forgot I was going to do that. Yeah, so it'd be really fun to actually have like, um design like you know show how to work with a cricket and then show how that like physically takes place and put it on like a grad cap that could be something fun uh, it's, a, it's the pinterest version of plotter it's sold at michael's <laughs> plotter is that so i'm not familiar with plotter is that like a cricket basically it's like the other version of that or it's like like they're both kind of like the same thing i imagine then way on which i think this is i really like how it's heavier on this side And that might be a little too much. Um, and then I think I just gotta add a little more on top of the skin, like a lighter gray. I just erased it because I didn't want this darker color on that layer. Or like, yeah, it's not really like a separate layer, but like, you know what I mean, like on that collar. So go back over here, grab like a, you know, somewhere like a lighter gray that's like below mid gray. Let me slide back over here. Um, we all say, yeah, plotters are known by the public as vinyl cutters. Okay, yeah, so that's... Yeah, it sounds like it's honestly the same thing. I may just only be familiar with, like, the Cricut brand. But it makes sense, totally makes sense that they have, like, competitors that, like, do the same thing. And 
And I say this a lot too, but if you're digging the music, you can find the links down below. Um, I just keep giving him shoutouts because he's one of my really good buddies, and I appreciate him a lot for making this music, you know, for me. Because I was telling him, you gotta put this on like SoundCloud or something, but he hasn't done it yet. Because he's just, he's the type who's just constantly making music. And so, I don't know, I just appreciate him. And I think one of the streams we're gonna do is, we were experimenting with the idea of like, what if we could have live music during the stream while I create the branding for him. So like he's the client, so like halfway through, you know, we can keep having like checkpoints and be like, okay, you know, here's the mood board, here's the style. It's like literally working with the client in front of you, which is a lot of pressure because you don't know if it's gonna work out or not. But I don't know. I just think it'd be really fun to try to incorporate like live music into a uh, stream. So we may feel ambitious one day, and you may see like another little window on this opposite side with like a DJ or something crazy. <laughs> Uh, Leon's saying the Cricket was a low budget competitor to real machines. Which makes sense, because I know the Cricket's like, you know, at home device or something. Uh, for like $100 more you can get a real machine though. That's good to know, because honestly $100 isn't that much more if I was going to have something that works a lot better. And so, a plotter. Okay, I'm just saying that out loud because I don't have a pen to write this down, which is very unfortunate. But I can go back and rewatch this video and know, like, because I'm saying this out loud. <laughs> No, I appreciate that, Leon. That's really cool. That's great advice. Oh, this one's much harder to work with. It's smaller. Uh, you saying I might be wrong, but I think you're limited to Cricket's materials. I... Yeah, you you might be. I'm not sure too, though, but I know, like, yeah, the stuff I have used with them have all been, like, the Cricut materials. So, honestly, I would not be surprised. And I've had problems with, like, their software before. It's been, like, frustrating where, like, every time I use it, I have to, like, reinstall the driver for some reason. So, yeah. But if anyone's just tuning in to drop in the chat and say hello, let us know your favorite Johnny Cash song. You know, you can like look up and see the ones that have already been said, but I'd love to see some surprises and like uh, some songs I don't really know, so after the stream I can go check them out. Once I kind of get this a little softer, then I'll zoom out again and kind of recap some stuff for some new people. Uh, drivers suck on literally all the machines. Oh, well, that's fun. Yeah, that's good to know though, Leon. I imagine Plotter, you probably have to have like specific driver or something or machine too. Like probably specific like software for that. Actually, I should add a little bit on this one. Wrong thing. Oh, actually, let me soften that up. Uh, go back to the brush. Let me add some of those on there. A little bit of speckles. I'll add a little more on, like, just on, like, this right side. And then I'll soften it up again. And control zero, boom. And when you zoom out like that, it's hard to see all those details. But I'm gonna go file save again, just to play it safe. And more coffee. And then let's zoom in a little bit so we can start to see, you know, all of this, um, the speckles and the grit, and you know, it could be potentially a Star Wars looking background. <laughs> So that's definitely something that I want to avoid. Hmm. I was about to click save again. I literally just did that. Um, that's also what I do sometimes as a filler when I'm just thinking. Let me check out this area and make sure you, that text is still going to be very legible. Which I think it will be. I think this text down here might be a little tough. Mm 
that drop caps. <laughs> um. So I'm, I'm gonna try something. Let's have a little bit of fun. We go file open, and then I'm going to go to. Actually, that's not the folder I want. I want this folder with film dust textures, and I'm gonna choose a random one. Just kind of see if it, how it looks. So it's hard to see. I think you guys can kind of see. It's got some of those speckles kind of in it already. So maybe we go here, drag that off, and um, just drag that into this file. a little bit. See, it makes everything kind of dark, so that's probably not what I want to do. Yeah, I don't think that's worth doing. But you know, at least we tried it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna just export this, and then, yeah, we can move on from there. Let me double check the stream again, refresh the iPad, make sure I'm not just talking to myself, and we're still good. Dope. So I'll make a PNG. I'm gonna... Yeah, I don't want transparencies. Pretty sure I can still click export while that pinwheel is going. Nope. So there we go. And you can tell those are some class assignments, which I don't know, weren't the most fun thing to do. Um, see, so yeah, let's just drop in this folder right now. It's a pretty big file, though. Uh, that's it. Looks cool, man. Good job. No, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I wanna. And soon we're gonna dive into the man in white and probably make like the inverted version of this. So I think that'll be really cool to see both of them together. And then have like a box that fits around them. The tough part I'm thinking about is it's gonna be really tough to figure out like a box that holds the two books. Cause this book is black, the other book is white, you know? So it's like, do I use like a mid gray or something? Or I don't know. That's future Colby's problem though. <laughs> uh, force habit, just save it one more time before I close it. Or actually, I'll just minimize it to play it safe. Let's go back to this file. Actually, hmm. So now I'm curious, should I mock it up first, or... I'll start working on the man in white version. And then if we kind of hit a wall, then I'll just start mocking up man in black. I don't know, for me, I like to just bounce around a lot when I work. Just because it really depends on like what stands out to me like at that time. So, I went over this artboard tool and hold down, select that, hold down alt and drag, which copies this whole artboard. In case you're like, how did you just do that? And, um, yeah. So, I'm gonna drag that texture off to the side. Let me, I don't, see I could just delete that, but then that makes all that text very hard to see. So, while I'm messing with it, I'm gonna go and just bring it down like 30%. Just so that way I can still see all this text. And it makes it a lot easier when I'm trying to like, select it. I'm hoping this just works perfectly. We shall see. Actually, before I select all of it, let's just do this. Cool. See, I'm a little worried that when it's just like black on white, that it won't look as cool as the other one. But we shall see. Actually, what I can do is I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna lock it, so that way instead of having to click all those, I'm just like highlighting them. Go, and let me kind of mess with these lines as well. What 
which is interesting that those are fills instead of strokes. I'm curious. To be honest, this was like an older file I had too. Uh, so some stuff might be a little different than what I would normally do, like this for example. These are like, you know, not in that text box. So, you know, I want to select something that's expanded, so that way like it only changes the color. Which actually, I should be smart about this and use my library, which I think I already have right here, but I want to make sure that's the color I want. So, uh, just a second actually, I just realized, let me, oh, I can swap sides there, like I don't need to use that transition very much. <laughs> um, yeah, what I was showing is like, I have this selected, I can go to this little plus down here and fill color, and I'm just going to add up here with these. They all might kind of look the same, but honestly they're slightly different, I think this was the one we just had. And it looks like that one below it was like missing one. So I'm just gonna. Oh, that's why. So when I've selected, hold down Alt and then drag. That'll copy it. I'm gonna zoom back out for a minute. Okay. I need that one as well. See, now I can just select that color. And let me go back to this side over here. I don't know why I prefer that. Oh yeah, I have that locked. So we go to unlock all. I just wanna do that, I just wanna have it white. Let me go to properties, make the opacity, let's go to 100. Didn't change it to white though. See, so I have this selected, and clicking that. That should be working. Huh, that's weird. If I can just delete that and create a new shape. Or leave that blank. But I'm thinking I kind of want a shape right there so that I can... I don't know, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Let's just create a box around this. And I like to go a little over the edges. Because I've had problems too before where I try to go right on the edge and then I export it. And then I notice like later on that there's like this tiniest little bar of like, you know, the white line. And I was like, I don't know, it drives me crazy. So you can tell this shape doesn't work here. I'm gonna leave those there for a moment as like fillers. Um, last week in Procreate, I was stretching, I was stretching, I was sketching ideas of like how to do this, but have it work for man in white. So the things to keep in mind with man in black, for this book, he's talking about how he's struggling with like drug abuse and he was struggling with like depression and the really hardships in his life. Where man in white is talks about, Johnny Cash is talking about his, um you know, turn to like religion and kind of turn his life around and rehab and all that stuff. So, where this one shows like the cigarette the inside the jacket pocket, I'll try to think of how do I do that, um, yeah, how do I do that, but like the opposite version. Which, don't judge me on this when I'm about to click, it's not the greatest, but honestly it's a placeholder for now. Yeah, you've seen that, you're probably like, oh yeah, that's not, what are you doing, that's not great. And I know, but... You know, we're gonna go ahead and use this for right now. And I'm gonna go and just crop it in more, just so that way I don't have like this giant box around it that makes it like difficult to work with. So I'll apply. And so you can tell here, I was trying to do like the, yeah, the exact opposite. The other one was like the inside of the shirt. This one's like the outside of the shirt. And maybe like for symbolism, I have like a little tiny cross there or something. Because I feel like it needed something because this one has the cigarette which communicates that whole idea so it's like there needs to be an element in there that reinforces yeah the vibe so that's still good let me go to range send to back and then let me select the one on top and just delete it i kind of did that first just so that way i can make sure they're in the same spot in both books and um i don't know for the i always deal with like scale and percentages and i'm gonna guess it's 25. no too small Let's try transform scale 33. That's, yeah, that's a lot better. But it's hard to see that shape now. Um, just to help me for a moment, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna go object, range, send to back, just so that way I can see the shape behind it, make sure I'm kind of on the right track. So yeah, you can tell it's off a little bit, so it's good that I went that step. 
let's do it right there. And I'm gonna arrange and send this one to back, and then delete that one, and delete that one. And that should be in a good spot. So, I'm gonna save it again. Just out of habit. So what I would need to do is I need to actually go in and change all this text, but I know no one on the stream wants to watch me just change a bunch of text. So the one I'm gonna really focus on for right now is just changing Man of Black to Man of White. It's messing those titles. Um, so click type, uh, just click right there. So something actually to remember whenever you're working like Illustrator, because this is something that took me a long time to actually figure out. So if you, once you click the type tool, you can create a box and then I have a tutorial like fills it with more Mipsum. And then you can do that, like type into it. But when you do this, it's not gonna scale accordingly. But if you go right here and just click it once and see more Mipsum, let's see if I click away from it, then it actually like is scalable. Which is something that's been like super useful like after I learned that. So I was like, oh yeah, I need to do that for everything. So let's just write the word. Actually, let's just do all the man in white. Well, I already have it. Uh, let's just, let's only just do the word white. So I have that, and um, what was the name of that type of face? Oh, and nice, I have it right here. So yeah, you can see it. Um, and I'm gonna select that color so it's black. And let me know too if you're in the chat and you have any questions, or just diving into this, if not, and I'm just kind of thinking out loud. <laughs> uh, I'd like to work over top of those just so I can make sure it's in the exact same spot. Just kind of lined right there. Let me go to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. And so I know that the word black should be... Oh. There we go, select that one. Let me zoom out and kind of see how that works. Okay, and then let me look at it like with both of these for a second. So other than this shape not being like the strongest, you know, image to use right there, I think overall like this concept kind of works, which I think is the most important thing. So once I change these words back over to like man and white, I'm gonna start adding like that same grit and texture on this one. And I'm curious how that's gonna look, you know, on like a white book versus the black book. And honestly, it may not look good, it may not work, and we'll just have to figure out what to do with that. So out of habit, oop, click the wrong one. Go to File, Save, because you know, like, why not? And um, yeah, so I have this word. Let me use a little magnifying glass. I don't use that enough. Select those. I'm gonna ungroup those. And um, oh, but I am gonna. Oh, I'm moving this background. I'm like, what is happening? So, I have that where I want it. Go to Object Lock again. Just so I don't end up with that problem. And I'll do this. Get in there for those details. Um, so, I want to Command G those, and I want to Command G those, and I'll Command V and paste this word. And then I'm just going to. Since I left those right there, I just put it in that top left corner and I just scale it down to exactly where I want it to be. Which I think that's good. And then I'll go Object Arrange, Send to Back. And then I just select that other word and I delete it. The spacing on this looks a little big. So I'm just going to do that a little bit. I'm going to zoom out. I think it works. And then. Yeah, let me just continue to do it over here. So yeah, I'll go to ungroup. Make sure that's grouped. Make sure those are grouped. I'll go command V, paste that there. Drop in that corner, scale it where I want it to be. Object arrange, send to back, and then I'll select that word and delete it. So this one has like a weird spacing too, right here. And it's, the word's in the same spot, but it's because I'm starting in that top left corner. And then the word, like, white, you know, is a W, so it has this angle in here. So I think just to help to, so it's more like optically aligned, I just kind of nudge it over a little bit. Just kind of help resolve that issue. And 
And I'm curious though if that. Yep. Ooh, see, busted. So I do want to adjust that a little bit more. Let me check out on this side too. Yeah, I think it's good. And I'm just going to delete this one too, just so it's like out of the way. But it's always good to use these. Um, if you don't have this on too, something to know is just go to view. Um, and then I think it's rulers and you would just say like show rulers or and right here I can like hide them. So let me just click that for a second. So you can see those disappearing. Um, go to rulers and show rulers. And so that allows you to just be able to click up there and drag down and you can kind of bring down these guidelines. Which is super nice to work with. So sometimes, too, whenever computers run into problems like rendering or it's like having trouble keeping up with it, you can see it gets like weirdly pixelated and it looks like your computer's doing something crazy. So if you, you can watch right there, it just did that. I know there's ways around it, it's just go to zoom in and zoom out and it kind of fixes it. But I think that's a problem with like my actual RAM of my computer. So, which just happened again, too, which isn't fun. So I'm going to go into Photoshop and kind of close that other file that I did have. Just so my computer isn't having to work as hard as it was doing. Hopefully. And I'm just going to save it. Because, you know, if it's doing that, it's a sign that, like, your computer's working too hard. So, you know, if it crashed, that would not be fun. Oh, yeah, this one right here. That was the last one I need. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm just going to copy all of this over here. Paste it right there, and I'm just going to rotate it. Just to make my life that much easier. Uh, and those are already grouped differently, which is nice. So, copy, paste. And now that I know, actually, I'm just going to do it anyways. I'm still going to align to this corner. And I'm going to bring it up and in. And I'll just kind of like work with that a little bit. And then I'm just going to bring it over a little more. And then arrange, send it back. Just so that way I can make sure I'm selecting that word. And then what I should have done with all those other ones is just now group all of those together. Cool. But since I copied that from here, that should be the exact size that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and get that corner so I can start to rotate. Get that corner, hold down shift so it doesn't like, you know, nice intervals. Bring it right there. And then I'm going to go down to here and try to line it up like exactly with that. Let me bring it over a little so I can get in here. And then, yeah, so let me do that, and then I can use the arrows to try to get it as close as possible. And I'll go to Object, Arrange, Send it Back again. So that way, I can make sure that once I click this, or once I click this, that I'm selecting that right word. So this one went, you know, a lot faster just designing this part, because I already had the base built, which is nice. Um, I'm taking another look at it again, because... I am going to be adding textures in a second, so I kind of want to make sure that this part is done for the most part. Let me try something. I'll go to Object Unlock, and it's kind of something fun I learned recently. So I have this selected. I go to Window, and I can go to Transparency. So let me bring this up here. And then you can see that's like white. It's because I have this white box selected. If I had this, you can see that image turns into that. But I want this background layer. Actually, before I do that, so I have this texture that I brought in. And so I just copy that first. And then I select this. You make sure that's there. And then I double click this. And then I'm pasting that layer there. Which I don't see any effects. You can see it down below. Huh. Okay, well, we tried. I didn't know if that was gonna work or not. Actually, let me go Command Z to kind of bring it back. There you go. So sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. I think it works better with just. It just really just depends on like what color you're using. But that was something I learned recently, and it's a very nice like tool within um, Illustrator that you don't want to forget about. So we took the artboard tool. So I'm on second artboard. Good to know. So now I go to File, I go to Export As, and it's as a PSD file, so it's a Photoshop file. Range, I'm telling it to export artboard number two, which is this one. 
And it'll also trim it where like that artboard ends. So let me do that, and this may take a minute. Maybe not even a whole minute, but. So you can see right there how like, yeah, my computer, it, like, I don't know, it got weird for a second. But that's just because it's, you know, fighting hard, because it's also streaming while I'm using these programs and playing music and, I don't know. Yeah. So I'm gonna click save. And before we get into that, something I did wonder too is if I should have a different mood board for that project. But I do know that this is the vibe I want to go for, so when I'm in Photoshop, I just want to have that fresh in my brain going in there. And even this right here. So that was something that stood out to me. This was something I had like a while back where it's like this typeface I'm using. But you can see it has that grain and stuff in this photo, and I think they do that very successfully. And I think that's kind of what I want to go for. Something else too is you see in here how they have like all these like scratches like that's that's the style we want to go for when we're doing Johnny Cash is that grit and grain and yeah getting a little wild with it so I'm gonna minimize that I'm bring back up Photoshop and then I'm gonna go to file open and I'm going to open that file I just exported and it is under this folder and it is under Ooh, yeah, I should have saved the artboard name as something different, but I think it's this one. And while it's loading, I'm going to double check the stream again, really fast. And that still looks like we are good still, which is nice. So let me bring this up right there. Let me double check something on this side. Um, hold on a second, I'm just doing some technical stuff. And we are good. Cool. Just want to make sure. Oh, and it did open the wrong file. Okay. So, now I know it is this one. Which, first thing I'm going to do is I'll rename it. And, super long title. Just because it's like the artboard names with the file name and, yeah. Let me save that, and I think we're just gonna dive into adding some like texture to this, making it, you know, some grit, and grain. I just keep saying that. Sorry. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. So I am curious if I can put something over top of this, like a texture, before I actually go in there and start using the brushes. So that's why I go back to the stuff I got from True Grit Texture Supply, which is like this film dust texture. I don't want to use that exact one. That's what I'm wondering if... Hmm. Honestly, this probably won't work. I may just want to go in and do it all manually with the brush. Yeah, I'm going to do it manually. Manually. Not like manly. I realize... Um, yeah, I realize I'm saying it wrong. Oh, I was like, where did that brush go? But I think it's just so tiny. Here we go. So I'm going to do the same thing where I take off of this image, just so that way it's like, like, I don't know, it helps that image feel a part of it. And it just, yeah, I think it helps a lot. So I'm starting out with like a lighter gray and then kind of build upon that. And sorry if you're just hearing my mouse click a bunch of times. Don't know if there's a way to solve that problem, but I also don't know if it's like loud or not. Also, if you're listening to music and you're like, this doesn't sound like Johnny Cash, it's definitely not. So this is my buddy Seth Lynn. You can find his link down below. But as much as I would love to be playing some Johnny Cash right now, I definitely think the video would get taken down if I was playing some of his cool music. So 
So I'm just kind of going and like adding these around here, just making sure it's kind of like evenly spaced. And I would, don't really want to go, if I can avoid it, like go over the words. Like, if I can't avoid it, I want to avoid going over the words, if that makes sense. So I'm just adding all these little speckles in here. And if you have any questions too in the meantime while I'm working on this, just let me know. If not, we're diving into this. And maybe I can do this one really quick and kind of show like a mock-up or two of yeah, those little action mock-ups. And we can just kind of look at it. Hear the mouse. Oh, that's great. Oh, thank you, Tina. No, that's honestly good to hear. I was worried that you just hear it constantly. Like, yeah, just like constant clicking. Like, I imagine if I was in, if the tables were turned, you know, I just hear a mouse clicking, that would get old. But no, that's great to hear. I appreciate the feedback. Okay, so now we have like this lighter gray. It's like kind of evenly coated, but not like exactly even, which is nice. I just want to double check to make sure it's not like obvious, like making sure like nothing like stands out really. So yeah, I'm gonna go and add a little darker color too. So I'm gonna choose it from this image again. And um, I'm looking for something that's more like mid gray. I think that might be good. Yeah, that's good. And this one, I'm thinking maybe I'll just kinda add this one closer to like the border. And maybe this texture for this one is more of like a framing device. Where like the closer you get to the outside, like the darker the grit and all that kind of gets whereas like the inside it's like you know less I don't know if that matters or not but it's just an idea that just popped in my head so we'll try that first been around the whole border so once I finish this we can zoom out and uh, see if anything stands out let me know if you guys have any opinions or if anything stands out to you we're like yeah that doesn't work or it does um, the ones on the jacket thing don't work so I'm gonna go ahead and just take those away because I think that's something I want to add like separately and focus solely on that plus I want to redo the center illustration for this because this was like a rough one that I created in, in uh, procreate and quickly I should add more of these like in these spots and maybe if I add like another color that one will be only around the border because it is an interesting idea to try to use 
know, the grit for like to help better frame everything, but yeah. Honestly, there's no really like um, technique or like I mean, there's nothing like I don't know, with, when it comes to adding like this texture I'm more just doing what I think works you know I don't think there's like a specific I'm trying to think of, like how to describe like a recipe or like a formula to like do this I think it's whatever you think works you know and whatever like doesn't you know distract or like take away from the functionality of the design and really, this is a patch project. This isn't for a client. So, I'm gonna do what I want. Or whatever you guys in the chat, you know, suggest, too, if you guys have any cool ideas. Which I think is, yeah, it's starting to come together a little bit. When you zoom out, it's harder to see, you know, the actual detail. We can see it's starting to get a little, some speckles everywhere. Let's go ahead and do one more with, like, a darker color, and we'll do less of it. And then we'll go into that illustration and add it on there. And then from there, if we got time, we might do mock-ups, but we may not have time. Which, honestly, it's kind of great we're getting both of these kind of done today. Because I'll be streaming tomorrow at this exact same time, and what I want to do is work on, like, a box set for both of these books to kind of live in. And then think about how I would showcase these. So with mock-ups, and then with actually having mock-ups that, like, reflect Johnny Cash. Because that was some feedback I got. Which, to show you what I mean for a second... Um, this was the mock-up I was showing before, which, you know, it's cool and all, but it's super clean background. It's like art gallery style, which definitely is not Johnny Cash's vibe. Uh, the feedback Andrew Hawkrattle gave me was like, oh, we sh you should add that as like, you know, on like a rustic, like really dark wood or like some metal or like, you know, something that definitely feels more like it. And I would 100% agree. Because it's interesting, once someone else suggests an idea, then it... You know, it becomes super clear, and it was like, oh yeah, like, I totally should have done that from the start. You know, but sometimes it just takes that, you know, other, like a fresh pair of eyes to notice something you don't. It is crazy, honestly, the time's flying by, because we're getting down to the last, like, 10 minutes of the stream. So if you do have questions, let me know. I'm going to keep trying to finish this up. Like as fast as I can, just so we can like export this one and have the finished version of this book ready for tomorrow's stream. But it's definitely getting there. Uh, the text and stuff I would really want to change, but time's sake, you know, I shouldn't. And I'm gonna add a new layer for this one. Just kind of make it easier, I think. And I'm just gonna select that background color and then maybe add some on here. And I may end up deleting some of this because don't like it yet. But it definitely needs some texture on. So the other one I have has like, you know, harder, like it's like more on like one side, which I think was very successful. And to, since this is a man in white, it's all about talking about like he's finding religion and like rehab and like, um, yeah, like turning towards the light. I think it would be cool if, since his head is this way, you know, maybe this is the lighter side because he's like looking towards the light in a way. And it's like little subtle things like that that just help reinforce your concept where it's like someone looking at it won't get that. Like they, or they most likely won't get that. But it's like once they under, like if they do get that, then it just helps it make it the piece that much stronger. And so I'm adding a little lot right here, but it's because I'm about to take some away. And let me just do one more color before I start taking it away. I do like a little darker than that. I want to do like, yeah, like that gray. Cool. So now I'll go back over here to this. And since it's on a separate layer, I'm just going to make sure I erase all the ones that are outside here. Uh, I'm going to add 
that cut out, so I'll make sure the stream is still good. And we're still good, awesome. Oh, and Jack's saying, time flies when you're having fun. It really does, especially like when you're just focused on like working. Which I really do enjoy doing these live streams, because then that forces me to like sit down and work on something for like two hours and just like, okay, I'm gonna dive into this, and that's like my sole focus for this time. Whereas normally in like real life, I'd way too ADD and I'll. You know, I'll start writing messages on Discord, I'll start replying to someone else, I'll do a homework assignment, I'll just start juggling too many things. And like, usually I can get them all done, but like, I don't know, it's kind of nice just to focus on this. So I'm going to make these ones on this left side darker, and as you get closer to this side, they'll be lighter. Like, I will soften these up a little bit, but that just goes to kind of help, you know, maybe show like a light source in a way. Too. Let me know if you have any last minute questions, too. Now, uh, something else I really want to think about when I'm working on this is paper choice. Because since this is like a book jacket, you know, you really want to keep that in mind because people are only gonna, not only, they're gonna. Well, actually, no, now there's like Audible and like all these other books. But, um, a big way it really lives is like physically. And so if it's on crappy paper or the wrong type of paper, then that really tells a lot. So something to think about is like whether it's matte or photo paper and like how that affects the colors you're using. That's why it's always good to do like test prints whenever you can, like yourself. Or if it's like a real job, you know, and you're making thousands of these books or something, then it's like if you can visit the facility and, you know, spot check and do all those things, I think it's definitely ideal. Something else to keep in mind too is whenever you're actually getting stuff printed, um, well, before you do that, though, is what I'm trying to say is you always want to try to find, like, a good printer near you, like, a good print place and kind of establish a relationship with them. That's something I learned early on that, like, having, like, a relationship with your printer can save you. Because there's sometimes there's last-minute projects where you got to turn around and be like, oh, no, I need this done, like, right now. And so you want to be able to call up someone and be like, know them by name and be like, hey, uh, I need this. What can we do? And, like, someone who can actually answer your questions. I think it's also, like, it's just huge. So I'm just gonna soften this up a little bit. And then I'm gonna click File Save out of habit. Because I just do that a million times. And then go there. I'm gonna go to File and Export. Because we're getting to the last five minutes now. So there's a PNG, I think it's pretty good. Looks good. I'll click Export. Now make sure this is on the uh, the folder I want. Click save. And I got the pinwheel because it is exporting. Boom. And I'm going to exit out of Photoshop. And I'm just click yes, because why not save it again, you know? I don't think it hurts. Cool, so Photoshop closed. I'm gonna bring up Illustrator again. This is the original file I started out with. And, um, yeah, so you can kind of tell that's where, actually, let me just, oh, no, it's, okay, there it goes. So here we go, I'm deleting those guidelines, just to help us view it a little bit. You can see here those versions where it's just the text on the background. I'm going to go up to just file a place, and I'm going to drop those, like, distressed, your, whatever versions you call them in here. So here's this. Uh, I'm just going to scale it down. Let's just do like 50%. Just because I'm only doing this for like us to preview it. And let's do another 50%. So let's do that. Let's do this one. Because the reason why I'm doing this, I just want to see them both side by side and like see if they feel like they're related, you know? Because I hope they will. And let's do like 50%. Cool. Okay, so here we go. We kind of have these two versions, which I think look pretty cool. I'm gonna go and click save. I'm happy with the direction we're going. I think they can definitely be pushed further still. And I think it'll be really cool to actually see them mocked up and in use, and then to create like um, a box that goes around these two books so that we can purchase it as like a set. 
I think that'll really help tie this all together as like a full case study and really make it like way more detailed, much more fun. I also think I might want to change this author photo on this one. But that's more just preference. So to kind of rewind back to the beginning, this was the mood board we were working with. You can kind of see the general vibe we started out with. Um, one thing I really like to do is go on Pinterest to actually find all the images I'm working with and narrow it down. I have different like type uh, styles and like typefaces I'm working with, as well as the reference photos from when I was making the illustrations. And uh, this was the mock-up we had originally, but we want to make one. Our goal is to make one that's way cooler and um, way more gritty. And Jackson, these are looking awesome. I love the concept. I really appreciate it, Jack. Thank you. No, that is awesome. And since Jack gave us her approval, I think we're good to go on this stream for the most part. So let me switch over to a different camera and try to do this. But I just want to say thank you to everyone who's watching right now, and I really appreciate each and every one of you. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a good weekend. Thank you very much for tuning in. Love you all, and uh, appreciate any feedback and stuff you have. And if anything pops up, let me know. I'm just going to 